Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. A shooting during a gathering outside an east side home has turned deadly. San Antonio police say a man who was shot there late last night has died. Two other people were grazed by the gunfire in the 4600 block of Belinda Lee. Katrina Weber reports police say there was more than one shooter in an SUV. There was no missing the scene in the 4600 block of Belinda Lee. Even from blocks away, police cars were visible in the dark. This morning, a closer view revealed traces of the shooting that happened around 11 last night. There also were stories from people here. We just started running, I guess. Yeah, and then we came out here and we saw a guy laying on the floor. Alma Rodriguez knew she heard gunshots nearby. Outside the home next door, police say three people were hit. Initially, officers said one victim was a 90-year-old woman. Later, we found out a woman in her 30s and another in her 20s were grazed by bullets. The person on the ground was a man in his 30s who died from his wounds. Witnesses say the shots came from a maroon SUV. Early on, officers told us there were several people inside the SUV who were shooting. People here and the evidence seem to say the same. One man told us off camera that not only were people and those cars hit by the gunfire, but also homes on both sides of the street. As Rodriguez found out, her home was one of them. In our garage, as you can see, um, in our kitchen, in our living room and then um, close to our bedroom. She says she and her family ran to safety and luckily they stayed safe. Everybody's okay, but I mean, we were extremely scared. Police are still trying to find the people who caused fear in her home and grief for the family next door. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Law enforcement officials are trying to crack two separate open cases, including a murder that happened back in 2017. Police say Joe Manuel Soto was killed in April of 2017. They tell us there were reports of gunshots in the 4,000 block of Moss Spring. However, police found the actual victims outside of South Park Mall. Officers say there were several victims. Soto was pronounced dead at the scene. Witnesses told police the victims attended an after prom party on Moss Spring. Witnesses also told officers they saw two people shooting at the victim's truck as he was driving away from the party. And Bear County deputies wanted to track down a driver who hit and killed another man. Deputies say the driver hit 26-year-old Antonio Marquez on Loop 4, 1604 near Sherworth back on April 16th. That's on the far east side. They say the driver was in a red 2015 Toyota Avalon that was damaged on the passenger side. Deputies believe the passenger side mirror is also missing. If you know anything about either of these two cases, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. An Alamo College's officer died on his way to investigate a shooting last night. And this morning, fellow officers honored his memory. They held a procession for the officers. The police say that the officer died of a heart attack last night. He was heading to the 1400 block of North Main Avenue. It was there that San Antonio police say a man in his 20s was shot in the chest. SAPD says the victim's roommates called police after he came rushing to their apartment with a gunshot wound in his chest. Officers say the victim could not give them the suspect's description and was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Police say they did find one shell casing, but were unable to find a suspect due to lack of information. In the day ahead, a new virtual town hall series will begin. District 8 City Councilman Manny Palaez is hosting the event on Facebook Live. It's titled Perspectives on the Pandemic. City Manager Eric Walsh will be the guest and will be answering people's questions about reopening the local economy. The virtual town hall starts at 6 tonight on Palaez's Facebook page. A second town hall is scheduled for next week. UTSA holding another panel discussion as well. This time around, they're going to be talking about the future of kindergarten through 12th grade education in the city. We are streaming it right now. It's on KSED.com. There are six experts on that panel. Some of the topics they're going to cover include the long-term impact of a lost school semester, the benefits and limits of social distance learning, as well as the digital divide in the city. If you would like to, you can ask questions. All you have to do is ask them via chat.
And new today, the Whitty Museum has announced they'll once again open their doors in phases beginning May 27th for museum members. For now, the Whitty's doors remain locked, though. The reopening task force has been working to bring it open once again to bring history, science, and culture lovers together to explore and learn in a safe manner. Alicia Barrera visited with the Whitty's president and CEO on their decision to delay their reopening and what your visit to the museum may look like for the foreseeable future. Although last week Governor Greg Abbott gave the green light for museums to open back up, the Whitty has chosen to remain closed to staff and visitors. We were not ready to, for the safety of our wonderful Whitty team and the safety of our wonderful Whitty visitors and our families, our multi-generational families. So it's taken us time. Time to order and install plexiglass protectors and six foot distance markers, but also to plan ahead and reach out to museums worldwide to learn about the best safety methods for an interactive museum like the Whitty. Fortunately, the designers that designed the new Whitty, Gallagher and Associates, have museums in Singapore and Israel and all over, and Singapore our museums had already opened, so they already had to grapple with this. The Witty will first open its doors to its members on May 27th, and then the grand reopening will take place on Saturday, May 30th for the general public. And safety measures are being installed as we speak. Masks will be required for everyone to wear, and anyone who walks in the Witty will receive a stylus. Every guest will receive a stylus pen to help eliminate contact with touchscreens or audio devices. A lot of what we have at the Whitty are hands-on, and so anything hands-on will be removed from the galleries, but we will still keep the interactive experiences, which are so fabulous. McDermott says the museum will operate at a 25% capacity, which will give families more than enough space to feel comfortable throughout their 10-acre property. You know, we've been here since 1926. This is a generational place. People have grown up here for generations and so really people miss the witty and we miss the people. Ticket sales are encouraged to be made online and while you're there you can explore witty where you are to the experience or download activities for kids and families related to cuisine, weather, gardens, birds and much more. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Folks are coming together to help gather food for those in need in our community. The Texas Baptist Men and the First Baptist Church in San Antonio teamed up this morning. They put together meals for 150 families. The partnership is meant to meet the growing need for food amid the coronavirus pandemic. This is part of the Texas Baptist Men's effort to provide 50,000 meals statewide for church hunger ministries. NESD and the San Antonio Food Bank also working to feed families in need. Volunteers handing out that food drive through style. They say they're going to be able to help nearly 1800 families today. We've seen several of these events around town, but any ISD staff says that it's nice to have one in that part of the city. I think it's wonderful that the food bank has partnered up with this and other community members partnered up with this to bring these um, distribution sites to our northern parts of the city. Um, we've got a lot of need in our part of, of the city too, but going to Traders Village, going to uh, off 90, it's kind of hard for our families. So we're grateful that we're able to bring it over here and it makes it easier because a lot of our families do struggle with transportation. Eddie ISD and the San Antonio Food Bank are doing these food distributions every Wednesday this month. You do need to register if you want to pick up supplies. And thanks to the latest order by Governor Abbott, Harlandale ISD will be one of the first and few San Antonio area school districts to hold an in-person graduation. It'll happen at Memorial Stadium. The community will be able to celebrate the class of 2020 graduations on June 1st, 2nd and 3rd. There will be some restrictions and additional screening guidelines will be put in place. The number of guests will be limited and social distancing procedures will continue to apply. Each high school will communicate their plan for seniors, including cap and gown distribution. Hey, local football stars helping out the food bank. One former steel stud talks about how he got involved. Larry Mears with that coming up in a few minutes in sports. As many states reopen amid the coronavirus pandemic, the number of cases nationwide continues to go up. After the break, how those states governors are reacting.
Commonwealth County has confirmed two new cases of COVID-19, bringing the total to 61. A 70-year-old from New Braunfels and a 40-year-old from the north side of Canyon Lake both tested positive. They're in self-isolation at home right now. The county also confirming two additional recoveries with a total now of 44. There are a total of 11 active COVID-19 cases with one person hospitalized. The death toll is at six. All right, let's take a look at the numbers of COVID-19 cases here in Bear County. These are the latest numbers that we've got. There are a total of 1,652 positive cases of coronavirus and 802 patients have recovered. The amount of deaths have increased by four since the last report, bringing the number to a total of 52 deaths. The city has said three of those deaths actually happened last month, but they were just now notified. As states reopen in the United States, many have seen an increase in coronavirus cases. And that's why it's still important to follow the proper safety precautions to avoid contracting coronavirus. ABC's Zachary Keish takes a deeper look into how some states have been affected. The Lone Star State, Texas, opening its economy further, despite an increase of nearly 2,000 new COVID-19 cases statewide in the last 24 hours. Governor Greg Abbott giving the green light to barbershops, salons, and other personal services to reopen this weekend. There's no law that says you have to stay in. You do what's best for you, what's best for your family. The governor says he is confident that the hospitals can handle the pandemic. Texas is fully capable of being able to manage the health care needs of everybody who contracts COVID-19. But there is concern by some as more people head to places like the beach. This in Galveston last weekend. In Illinois, the state reporting Tuesday its highest one-day fatality count since the start of the pandemic with 176 fatalities. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzer announced the state will reopen region by region and could take months. There's so much pressure for us to get back to that normal, but the truth is that we're still in a significant war with an enemy. However, the number of cases in the epicenter, New York State, is trending down. But this graph from the New York Times shows if you exclude cases in New York, the rest of the country is trending up. As for a vaccine at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, pharmaceutical company Pfizer and its German partner BioNTech officially launched human trials in the United States. On Monday, David Rock, a 26-year-old at microbiology PhD student, was the very first person to be injected. Because this is a phase one trial, it is uh, double-blinded and randomized. So I'm not actually sure on my end, like if I got one of the vaccines, candidates or if I had a placebo. So we're employing all the normal safety precautions. More than 100 vaccines are currently being studied worldwide. At least eight of those have already been approved for human studies, a process that typically takes years. Zachary Keish, ABC News, New York. Outside with live cam, man, this has been an uh, interesting week and it continues to be an interesting week. I am liking these temperatures, though. Yeah, it feels really good out there right now. We had that cold front move through yesterday. It got hot before it moved through, but when it did, it, it felt a lot better. The temperature's at 75 degrees right now. We're going to lose some of those clouds you see out there. The aquifer, though, still dropping. It's down another foot today to 662.3. We desperately need some rain. We got a little bit this morning, but not here in San Antonio. Uh, mold grass jumped up into the moderate category today. Pecan and pigweed are low. We'll talk about our next front, what the rain chances look like with that front coming up. Welcome back. We started off fairly cool this morning. We had a couple showers, a couple storms around, a lot of cloud cover. This is the time lapse from earlier today. Clouds tried to go away for a little bit. Sun popped out and then the clouds came back. And now we're starting to see those clouds move out again. We should see more sun into the afternoon. But boy, the temperatures are great. 75 degrees right now. Dew point is at 48. Easterly winds at about 10 miles per hour. Those winds a little bit gusty, by the way. Uh, yes, there were some showers and storms this morning, mainly pre-dawn. So a lot of us didn't even notice they were there, but uh, they dumped some rain around Carrizo Springs. They were one of the big winners overnight, about three tenths of an inch. Nothing here in San Antonio and Cuero picked up close to an inch. There were some pockets of some heavier rain, uh, but those storms quickly went away this morning and then left behind some clouds. And we're still dealing with those here across Bear County. A few breaks here and there. You'll notice the uh, sun is out up to the north. 73 degrees, Bernie stage 79 right now. New Braunfels, a little more sun for you and temperatures there a little warmer as a result. 76 Seguin, 77 in Pleasanton. We'll zoom out some full sun now for Rock Springs Junction and Kerrville. 
as these clouds are trying to sink south. And again, uh, later today, the sun should become more plentiful here around uh, San Antonio. Uh, wind gusts right now gusting to 18 in town, 23 mile per hour wind gust in New Braunfels, 17 mile per hour wind gust there in Gonzales. And this, these are mostly easterly winds. We'll get more of a southeasterly wind tomorrow, so moisture comes back for a little bit, but it's just it's really one day because we get our next front. On Friday, the pattern has become a little more active for us. Uh, dew points in the low end right now. Dew point is at 48 uh, in San Antonio and, and generally right around 50 for most of us. You don't run into the moisture until you get down around Corpus Christi. Dew points, as I talked about, will come up some tomorrow. So we may jump into the 60s, but it's, it's just not going to last that long. And uh, we're not seeing any 70 degree dew points or anything like that, thankfully. Water vapor shows that we've got some drier air aloft moving in. And then as we zoom out some, uh, here's a look at the country, some showers, and there was actually a little bit of snow this morning up across parts of uh, upstate New York. That's just how cold it's been. It's been sort of a cold pattern for all of the United States. And here's our next storm system that will drag down some cooler air into Texas for the weekend. We'll be below average Saturday. Mother's Day looks great as this uh, frontal boundary will uh, bring in that cooler air. Here's what the future cast looks like. So as we go into tomorrow, some clouds may develop. Uh, off to the west of San Antonio, but uh, for the most part, it'll be a, a nice start. And then by tomorrow afternoon, dry line sets up. There could be a storm or two that develops out west. Still not an issue. And then here comes our front. Should move through about midday Friday. With it, a shower or storm is possible. But just like with this last front, prospects don't look great for any sort of significant rain. So we're not going to look for much out of this other than it brings in the cooler air, the gusty winds on Friday and then brings great weather for the weekend. 85 degrees today. We'll still get those clearing skies. East northeast Julie winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then we'll look for 86 tomorrow. 81 on Friday. Breezy 20% chance of rain. That's it. Clouds linger over into Saturday. 75 on Saturday. 81 for Mother's Day. And then next week it does start to warm up with another chance of rain by Tuesday. Don't forget to get your mother in your family a little something something. Yes. Just a reminder, Justin. Thank you. Yeah, like she says, don't forget to get your mother something. Are your kids watching? <laughs> Are they paying attention? I hope so. <laughs> they better be studying, actually. <laughs> oh, let's see what they come up with for Sunday. That'll be, that'll be good. A couple of uh, jazz players were not exactly friends after Rudy Gobert got the coronavirus. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell was upset with how Rudy Gobert was reportedly careless inside the locker room and didn't really take this whole COVID-19 thing very seriously. That caused the beef, but apparently Mitchell and Gobert, well, they've made up. Plus, could Kevin Durant return if the NBA resumes its season? Coming up. They're ready to put uh, this behind them, uh, move forward. Utah Jazz Vice President Dennis Lindsay says Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell are no longer at odds in big board sports. The NBA continues to struggle on whether or not to return to play after becoming the first major league sport to shut down back on March 11th. To resume play or just cancel what's left of the 2020 season is first. But after that, do they continue with just the playoffs and in a bubble in Las Vegas or Orlando with no fans at all? Meanwhile, it sounds like the beef between Utah Jazz teammates Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell is no more. Gobert was the first NBA player to test positive for COVID-19. He upset the media and members of the Jazz for mocking the virus during this clip by touching microphones and recorders and for acting careless inside the Jazz locker room. Mitchell later tested positive for the virus, which in turn reportedly made him very angry with Gobert for his lack of care. Jazz VP Dennis Lindsay says things are better between the two. I think they both spoke to this. They're ready to put uh, this behind them, uh, move forward, uh, act professionally. With that said, uh, we're very pleased with the collective makeup of our group, Donovan and Rudy in particular. And I think uh, at the most basic level, they know they need each other to accomplish the goals that we want to accomplish as being the last team standing in the NBA. 
Thanks to the near two month long delay, Nets forward Kevin Durant could play this season if the NBA decides to continue the regular season. Durant ruptured his Achilles tendon while playing for the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals last June. Such injuries usually require a year of recovery and before the shutdown, Durant was said to be looking like himself on the court. The Nets are seventh in the East with 18 games to go. Former Steel star, now Longhorn safety, Caden Stearns is helping to raise the money for the San Antonio Food Bank while participating in the birthday parade for Jets and Rockin' and cancer patient Bryce Wisdom. Caden has teamed with five other local athletes, including Steel star Malcolm Brown, who now plays for the Rams with a goal to raise $50,000 for the San Antonio Food Bank. In a Zoom interview, Stearns tells us it was Bryce's brother Rashad, who plays for UTSA, that reached out to him for help. Rashad, he sent me uh, on t something on Twitter and it's about the, the San Antonio Food Bank being backed up like miles or like a mile or something where people were actually, they were struggling to feed people. My mom, the next day, sent me something about it. And so it was like a sign that I think this is what um, we need to do. So um, other guys have been very helpful. Stern says he is treating as if the 2020 season will kick off on time with the proper safety precautions to guard against the spread of the coronavirus. And when it does, he knows he will have to be one of the defenders, defensive leaders at the junior looking to bounce back from their eight and five finish last year that led to wholesale coaching changes, including new defensive coordinator Chris Ash. It's always good when the little brother can call the big brother and say, hey, you need you need to do right this. help you us out help us out down here <laughs> that is cool and the big brother goes away yeah i guess it better yeah, i'll tell you that the football community here man those guys are tight they have done a great job yes they have appreciate that all right larry thanks thanks larry coming up in the next half hour what the social media platform twitter is doing to censor harmful language plus the trump administration's coronavirus task force could look a little different in the future in our next half hour why president donald trump is looking into a new team and new today at five, if you're cooking from home more often these days and need a little help with preparation, a food processor might come in handy. Marilyn Mortz has some recommendations for which can make your job easier. That's today at five after Entertainment Tonight. The way the Trump administration handles the coronavirus outbreak going forward could actually be changing. President Donald Trump appearing to want to replace the coronavirus task force with a new team. Well, Mike Pence and the task force have done a great job, but we're now looking at a little bit of a different form, and that form is safety and opening, and we'll, uh, we'll have a different group probably set up for that. CNN is reporting that a senior White House official says health experts will still continue to advise the Trump administration. This comes on the heels of two models that project the relaxing of social distancing orders in most parts of the country will bring a spike in coronavirus cases and deaths. Do you believe that's the reality we're facing, that, that lives will be lost to reopen the country? It's possible there will be some because you won't be locked into an apartment or a, or a house or whatever it is. But at the same time, we're going to practice social distancing and we have to get our country back. Some state leaders like New York Governor Andrew Cuomo maintain that it's still too early to start reopening. One of the nation's top vaccine experts says he was fired for prioritizing science and safety over politics. Dr. Rick Bright alleges he was removed from his position after he cautioned treatment for the virus favored President Donald Trump. Dr. Bright led the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, but was reassigned last month to the National Institutes of Health. In a statement, the Department of Health and Human Services said Bright was not yet shown up for his new position. Bright's attorney says her client still doesn't know anything about his new position. There is no position as far as he can tell. Nobody has contacted him. He knows of no position at NIH. Um, he has, for the last few days, um, informed them that he's out on doctor's orders, dealing with some hypertension related to dealing with all of this. So it's not that he hasn't shown up at work. They know exactly where he is. Uh, he's waiting to determine where at NIH he's supposed to go. Um, and when he knows that, he'll show up. 
In a statement, a Health and Human Services spokesperson said Dr. Bright was transferred to NIH to work on diagnostic testing, which is critical when it comes to combat COVID-19. A biotech company says it might have a treatment for the new coronavirus available by the end of summer. It relies on something you've likely never heard of based on a concept from a century ago with a high tech twist. CNN's Elizabeth Cohen has details on a new approach. The key to making a brand new drug for COVID-19 could be in this vial of blood. It comes from this man, Eli Epstein, who's recovered from coronavirus. Now doctors at the Rockefeller University in New York City are searching his blood for just the right antibodies. You really want something very potent. Potent means can neutralize, kill the virus. It's a twist on the use of convalescent plasma, where someone who's recovered from COVID gives blood directly to someone who's sick. That can work, but it's old technology. Dr. Emil von Behring won a Nobel Prize for his research on convalescent plasma in 1901. The new approach uses monoclonal antibodies and it's cutting edge. Here's how it works. When someone is sick with COVID, antibodies inside their blood fight off the virus. After the person recovers, they donate blood. Scientists select the most powerful antibodies and clone them and turn it into a drug. It's one of the hottest areas in COVID research. Companies in New York and San Francisco, Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee, even the Department of Defense and many more are involved in monoclonal antibody research. We caught the team at Vanderbilt as they picked their favorite antibodies. None of these, these are all distinct, hitting the same site, but distinct antibodies. The treatment could possibly prevent infection or treat those already sick. Vanderbilt's lead researcher on the project, Dr. James Crow, specializes in vaccines, but he says monoclonal antibody research will be faster. I think antibodies will be finished first and will be the bridge toward longer immunity, which will be conferred by vaccines. So fast that the pharmaceutical company Regeneron says they might be able to have their monoclonal antibody drug on the market by the end of the summer. Their technology is already used to treat cancer, arthritis, and asthma. We can clone out the best of antibodies from recovered humans. We've selected the best ones to create a antibody cocktail, as we called. With so much work on this. I think the more groups we have working on it, all the better. And, and the more shots on goal we have for getting an effective uh, prevention or treatment. The hope is high for this old therapy turned new. And that was Elizabeth Cohen reporting. Outside with a lot of some clouds out there and nice temperatures, though. I like that. Yeah, the clouds are helping us keep these temperatures down a little bit. We're at 75 degrees of front move through yesterday, made all the difference in the world. These clouds have been a little bit stubborn today. I do think they'll eventually go away uh, this afternoon. We will see some sun around here. Take a look at this picture on our KSAC Connect. This is beautiful. Flowers are out. Everything's trying to green up, although rain would be really good at this point. We don't have a whole lot in the forecast. Uh, maybe a slight chance on Friday. You look at the visible satellite picture in the clouds. Uh, they're still there. Seem to be building back a little bit to the north. So it may be a, a while longer before we see full sun here in San Antonio. But certainly if you're up across the hill country, sun is out places like Kerrville and Fredericksburg. A little more cloudy as you go down Highway 90 there, Hondo over towards Uvalde. Temperatures, as we mentioned, really nice. 73 Bernie Stage, 73 Hondo, 76 in Divine, 79. Right now in New Braunfels forecast for today, we should get up to 85 as long as those clouds do indeed clear out 82 by 7 o'clock and then east northeast Julie winds will be breezy from time to time at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Guys. Thank you, Justin. The online real estate database Zillow is letting its employees work from home for the rest of the year. The co-founder and CEO announced it on Twitter. Employees will have their flexibility to choose if they want to work at home or anywhere else. The CEO says he believes working from home, quote, will have a lasting influence on the future of work and home, end quote. Zillow is known for listing properties for sale and rent on its website. According to The Verge, Twitter is testing a new moderation tool that would prompt users to think twice before sending a nasty reply. Users who employ language that is, quote, harmful will get a prompt recommending that they self-edit their reply before posting it. 
It's Twitter's most recent attempt at coping with widespread harassment on its platform. The Verge reports that during the testing, the new feature will only appear for iOS users. Sprouts Farmer's Market expanding grocery pickup at its locations in Austin, Lubbock, and here in San Antonio. Customers can now shop products at sprouts.com slash order to be picked up at the same day, or you can schedule several days in advance. You are alerted when the order is prepared and gets ready for pickup. Groceries will be brought to you when you arrive. All you have to do is check in at a designated pickup parking spot. Hey, it didn't take long for former Cowboy quarterback Cooper Rush to find a job. He now works for an arch enemy. Larry Mears has that coming up in sports. And after the break, Boy Scouts who are doing their part to help during the pandemic may have the chance to earn something special. All about the new merit badge next. The Boy Scouts have unveiled a coronavirus merit badge for scouts making personal protective equipment for frontline workers. On Tuesday, the Long Island Boy Scout troops unveiled the badge. Scouts all over Long Island picked up materials to help make face shields. The first of its kind youth relief effort will allow children to support those on the front lines of the pandemic. The merit badge and certificate will be presented to the children when it's safe. If you've been wondering what to do during the coronavirus quarantine, the but Holdsworth Memorial Library over in Kerrville might have just what you're looking for. The library has teamed up with Mango Languages and they are now offering more than 70 world language courses. The program is free for all library customers. It can be accessed anywhere with internet connection and a library card. The program teaches language and culture. It's taught by native speakers and it's apparently simple with clear instructions. I can speak to That's language. not a bad thing to do at this yeah. time. I wonder if, like, Texan is part of well, one of the Well, those are your two languages, English yeah. and Texan? English and Texan, yeah. And you're not so good at English, so well, you're, you're great at I'm Texan. I'm good at Texan. <laughs> <laughs> that weather is something else, boy. Justin, can, like, Justin well, that's good. You, can't I, you speak uh, Panhandle? I can speak West <laughs> Texas, yeah. I sure can. <laughs> Well, you got uh, Louisiana. I do a little right. Cajun. See? Yeah. There we go. We'll get yeah. all kinds well, of language. Ain't it beautiful out there? Uh, <laughs> 75 degrees right now. Uh, the average is 85. We're going to be close to the average a little bit later today. Record uh, is 99, set back in 1984. Thankfully, that is not in jeopardy. We have a small rain chance by the end of the week. Some cooler temperatures by the weekend. We'll take another look at that seven-day forecast coming up. Welcome back. Let's go live outside. We'll show you that we've got cloudy skies still here in San Antonio. We're waiting for these clouds to break up. They're having a hard time doing that. 75 degrees right now. Dew point is at 48. Easterly winds at about 10 miles per hour. Temperatures are going to be on the cooler side today. That front really helped us out yesterday. And if these clouds keep holding strong, we may see temperatures in the lower 80s instead of mid 80s. But we are seeing some breaks there on the north side. Uh, certainly around New Braunfels, you're seeing some sun. Kerrville, the hill country, the sun is out there. There's going to be some breaks today. I, I do think we see some sun, but uh, for the moment, mostly cloudy. 78 degrees, Castroville, 73, Hondo, 76 right now in Skeen, 77 in Pleasanton. Uh, everybody's in the 70s except for our eastern counties. That's where you run into a few 80s. Gonzales, Victoria, and they've seen quite a bit of sun out there. Uh, there's the look at the 24 hour temperature change. We're about 10 degrees cooler than we were yesterday at this time. And it was about this time yesterday that front started to get close. And then, of course, pushed through around 2 p.m. or so. So it did good for us. And it also picked up the winds. Right now, we've got an easterly, northeasterly wind. It's gusting too. Uh, it's about 23 miles per hour there in New Braunfels, gusting to 18 here in town. So it'll be somewhat of a breezy day, and it'll be breezy tomorrow and Friday too. So the winds really don't let up all that much. Here's a look at the forecast humidity. We've got dew points that are pretty low right now, but as we get into tomorrow morning, wind starts to become more easterly and southeasterly, and that's when we start to see the moisture increase just a little bit. And then by tomorrow evening, dew points are back close to 70. So yes, that's not so nice. It gets a little humid, right? But it only lasts one day because that frontal boundary will be here. It looks like midday Friday. That'll take the humidity with it once again. So it's it's really just a day here that we've got to worry about uh, the stickiness. Uh, looking at the radar and satellite, we had some showers and storms much earlier this morning. This is pre-dots. We're talking about 5 a.m. here. Uh, there was quite a bit of activity on the radar. 
Uh, it dropped some decent rain in very localized spots, but not really here in San Antonio, and it died out pretty quickly. And then in its wake, we've had the cloud cover. As we zoom out some, most of the country is, is pretty quiet. There's a big trough out east, and that's bringing some cool air to New England and the northeast. And this is what we're going to focus on up here. This is our next storm system. A little area of low pressure that's going to dip south. It'll drag this front all the way into Texas, and it will drag some cooler air back here again. Uh, looks like Saturday into Sunday. So Futurecast shows that uh, we'll get maybe some morning clouds tomorrow out west and then uh, maybe a storm or two along the dry line tomorrow afternoon. Then the front comes through midday Friday with it. Shower storm, but rain chances still on the low end. Not a good rainmaker for us, unfortunately, but it will bring the cooler weather for the weekend and some great weather for Mother's Day, which is very important. 85 degrees today, clearing skies, east northeasterly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then we'll go 86 tomorrow, partly cloudy and breezy. 20% chance of rain on Friday. Clouds linger through much of the day on Saturday. That'll keep things fairly cool. 75, 81 on Sunday. And then warming up next week with another chance for some storms on Tuesday. Guys? Looking at a pretty weekend. Thank you, Justin. I didn't realize that Andy Dalton had so many options when the Bengals let him go. Last I read, he had five other teams that were wow. interested in them, in him, and others would have paid him more money. Ooh. Yeah, including the Pittsburgh Steelers, according to reports. But Andy Dalton decided to join the Dallas Cowboys. And coming up, you'll hear why he went with Dallas and Korean baseball. The regular season is finally underway with a unique first pitch coming up.